In this video tutorial I'm going to share a few winter watercolour painting ideas which you can easily try for yourself. The coldest season of the year stirs up different emotions for all of us. There are lots of things that I associate with winter, all of which make great subjects for painting. If you're looking for inspiration for things to paint during the cold season, just think of all the things that remind you of winter. I'm going to show you how to paint three subjects in this video tutorial. A winter mountain scene, these wintertime red robins, and some winter leaves and berries. You can download the worksheets for painting these ideas by clicking the link below the video. Don't feel daunted by what might seem like complicated subjects to paint. I've made the process simple and easy to follow. The idea is to paint in a loose and free style. The objective isn't realism, but more to enjoy the transparent characteristics of watercolour and the way colours blend on the paper. After sketching the outline of the mountain scene onto watercolour paper, fix the sheet down onto a flat board using masking tape. Begin by painting the mountain range in the far background. To do this, make sure you use a highly diluted mixture of paint. By making the far mountains light in colour and the closest part of the mountains darker, this will help add a sense of depth as if the mountains were fading away into the background. I'm using Payne's Grey as the basic colour for the mountains, but to make the painting more interesting, I also added some Pyrrol Scarlet, Burnt Umber and Prussian Blue to make warmer and cooler versions of grey. Try to paint the backdrop of mountains in one go and vary the colour of your paint mixture while the surface of the paper is still wet. Painting with a wet on wet technique like this will produce a nice smooth blend of colours. When the first layer of paint has dried, continue with the middle distance mountains using a slightly stronger mixture of grey. Leave the white paper untouched to represent the snow. Vary the colour on your brush between cool, warm and neutral grey and try to make the colour darker and stronger in value as you move downwards. Leave the paint to dry again then begin painting the foreground mountains using darker valued paint. Once again vary the colour on your brush slightly as you work to produce a variegated wash. A variegated wash is basically any shape which has a smooth transition of colour. This time, when you reach the bottom edge of the mountains, start to add clear water to your brush and blend the grey colour so it becomes lighter towards the bottom of the sheet. This produces what's known as a graduated wash. The aim is to give an impression of mist or fog around the base of the mountains by making the colour lighter. Let the surface of the paper dry completely before starting to paint the trees in the foreground. The trees will be painted in three stages, in a similar way to the mountains, progressing in value from light to dark. The first layer of paint will be light, the second layer should be mid-toned, and the final layer will be dark. Each layer needs to be left to dry completely before painting the next. Painting successive layers of watercolour like this is a technique known as glazing. Prepare a fairly diluted mixture of green paint and start painting the distant row of trees. Do this in a similar way to how you painted the mountain. In other words, vary the colour on your brush slightly to achieve a variegated wash and paint the row of trees in one go while the paint is still damp. Paint the trees as one big shape. Don't try to think of them as individual trees or you'll find yourself fussing over separate trees rather than painting the whole shape. Let the first layer of paint dry then begin painting the next row of trees using a slightly stronger valued green paint mixture. Again, try not to think of these as individual trees. I'm using the tip of my brush to dab paint onto the paper to help create an outline to represent the crown of the trees. You want to paint the whole shape as one continuous wash with a bit of variation in colour. When you've finished, leave the paint to dry again and mix up some dark green paint for the trees in the foreground. Use the same brush technique as before, dabbing colour onto the paper until you've completed the shape of the nearest trees. Add some darker trees to both sides of the sheet to help balance the composition. Now let's have a look how to paint the red robins. Sketch the outline of the birds onto watercolour paper then fix the sheet onto a board so that it doesn't move around while you work. Remember the idea is to paint in a quick and loose style so that you don't become absorbed with the details. To do this I painted the whole of the bird as if it were one continuous shape, moving quickly from one colour to another. Paint around the eye and the beak and leave the white underbelly untouched, using the side of your brush to create a rough edge where the red breast feathers finish.
I used a mixture of Hansa Yellow and Pyrrol Skylet for the orange colour, and to add a textured effect I dropped in a few grains of salt onto the coloured wash while the paint was still damp. Salt absorbs the moisture and will lift some of the wet paint off the surface, leaving a lighter coloured mottled texture. While the surface is still wet, dab in some stronger paint to the underside and the edge as a way to represent the shaded side of the bird. Then start painting the rest of the bird shape with various browns and greys. Add new brush strokes of colour while the paint is still wet so that the colours blend and diffuse together nicely. Paint the upper edge and the left hand side with light toned paint and add darker colours to the right hand side and the underneath of the bird. This helps to give a sense of the direction of light. Paint the other birds using the same method. Vary the colour and the tonal strength of the paint so that you get a variation in hue and value. Aim to paint the bottom and the right hand side of the bird shapes with dark colours as if the light were coming from the upper left. Leave the paint to dry on all three birds, then carefully remove the salt from the surface. All that remains is to add a few details. Paint the eyes and the beaks using a strong mix of Payne's Grey. Don't forget to leave some white highlights for the eye and the beak. As a final touch, add some dark brown brush marks underneath and around the wings, so that the wing shapes look separate from the body. And here's the finished result. Finally, I'm going to show you how I painted the winter leaves and berries composition. Tape down a sheet of watercolour paper onto a board, making sure the tape is firmly fixed down. When you remove the tape, this will leave a nice white frame around the painting. I didn't draw any pencil guidelines for this watercolour, but if you feel more comfortable, you can sketch some shapes onto the sheet before you begin. I started by painting some big round leaves using a diluted mixture of blue-green paint. I painted these as groups of threes because odd numbers like this tend to produce a more harmonious result. Notice that I left a white gap through the middle of each leaf to represent the rib down the centre. Try to distribute the leaf shapes evenly across the sheet and paint as if the edges of the paper don't exist so that the leaves overlap the sides. Let this layer of paint dry then start painting a new series of different leaf shapes. This time I used a yellow green paint and I'm painting small branches of pine leaves. To do this I first painted a line for the stem, then I used an outward flicking motion with the brush to paint the individual pine needles. Again distribute these pine leaves evenly around the sheet and don't hesitate to overlap the underlying leaf shapes. The aim is to build up layers of leaf shapes on top of each other so that the transparent paint lets the underlying pattern show through. You can even paint new darker pine leaves on top of the first layer of dried leaf shapes. Leave the paint to dry again and prepare a mixture of strong bright green paint for the next set of leaves. This time I'm painting a series of longer pointed leaves. Again the idea is to paint over the existing leaf pattern and at the same time continue to fill in the blank white spaces on the paper. Don't forget to leave a white highlight down the centre of each leaf. Continue painting the same type of pointed leaf shapes. You can modify the colour on your brush as you progress, for example by adding more yellow to the mixture as I did here. When you're happy with the distribution of leaf shapes across the surface, leave the paint to dry again and make a mixture of bright red in preparation for painting the berries. Leave a small white highlight for each berry and paint them in small groups or as individual berries. The berries are the final touch to this composition. You can alter the strength of your red paint if you want to add some variation in tonal value. Red is a complementary colour compared to green. These two colours look good together because they produce a high level of colour contrast. I hope you enjoyed these easy, winter-inspired watercolour paintings. Feel free to download the worksheets from my website by following the link below this video. If you like this video then don't forget to click on the subscribe button below you'll receive notifications whenever I publish something new. Also, if you want free watercolour classes that I only share with my newsletter subscribers, head over to my website at watercolouraffair.com and sign up for the newsletter. It's completely free.